next exactly. subject, Stephen. It's a juicy one. It's your favorite team. Yeah. We're gonna we're just gonna talk about your leaves. How how are they doing, Stephen? How are you feeling about your leaves? We just, just want to know how you're feeling. Oh, feeling great, man. Leaves are doing good in your What's your eyes. Bad about with the leaves. You're right. What is there oh, to yeah. feel yeah, bad I'm about? Second it? in the division. Yeah. Oh. Go like off, bro. Games. Go off. I mean, there's not much else to say besides, yeah, they're winning games. They're in a good spot. I mean, we all, again, I can, I can say this a million times. The important part is come springtime and playoffs. That's where it matters. Right now, this is all just lead up to that, and they should be doing this. They, sh they should be playing this well. They're this good of a team. There but, go. uh, yeah, I guess we want to get into what happened Sunday night against the Jets. I guess we can do that. Yes, that would be pretty important to what's going on around the league. It's not only the Leafs, too. There's also incidents afterwards. Other other games that have happened that have seen some pretty shady hits, actually. And was how about you get going onto the the Sunday Sunday game, and uh, I'll talk about the Winnipeg and I think New York game that happened. Go ahead. Right. Okay. So Sunday, um, as most of you guys probably have heard by now, Leafs and Jets played a game and things got very out of hand. It all started when Neil Pionk um neon had a neon knee hit with Rasmus Sandin, which forced Sandin out of the game. Spezza was very displeased with this and was yelling at the referees from the bench and you know, obviously voicing his opinion as he has the right to do he's, he's a guy who's been around played over 1200 games he has the right to say to say something right he's right. he's earned it is what i'm saying so anyways he decides since okay well since the refs aren't going to do anything i'm going to take this into my own hand because that's what happens mm -hmm. when the referees don't make the decisions the players then have to police the game and make the decisions themselves which most of the time they're not the right decisions we i think we can all admit that so Spezza comes off the bench, obviously for a shift, yeah. and goes, first thing, goes right after Pionk. So he's going to hit Pionk, but then Pionk at the same time is going down to swipe a puck out of the zone with his hand. So as he's going down, like at this point, Spezza's already committed to the hit. Yeah. Like he can't turn back. And he was aiming for the guy's body, which is how you throw a proper hit. But again, as Pionk's going down, the, the first point of contact ends up being Spezza's knee on Pyong's head. Now, again, that wasn't intentional, but that's how it was. If you're looking at it black and white, the league, the player safety, they saw it. It was a knee to the head. This has to be an in-person hearing. Yeah. And there was an in-person hearing on Tuesday. It came out a six-game suspension, which, I mean, when you're getting in, in hearing, it's a minimum five. So six was, I guess, just plus one, uh, plus one game. Um, also, Spezza is now appealing that to Spezza Just gonna say suspension that. because I'm imagining that the arguments they're using are that um, you know it, it wasn't he wasn't intending to knee the guy in the head because again they suspended him six games for kneeing. I guess maybe they're gonna say that wasn't the intent. Uh, mm -hmm. So hopefully he can get it. I don't think it's gonna go away the suspension. Obviously he's already served one game and tonight's yeah. gonna be two games. I think they can get it lowered, maybe a four or five. But yeah, you're not going to get it lowered much more than that. No. Uh, aside from that, so Pionk ended up getting two games for his knee on knee with Sandine. Okay. And also because of Spezza's knee to the head yeah. in that hit, um, Pionk is now in concussion protocol. Yeah. Simmons, Wayne Simmons, this one, this one made me laugh. He just got fined two thousand two hundred fifty dollars, so a little slap on the wrist for him. Not yeah. much there. Um. But yeah, that one, that one just made me laugh. I mean, they gave him a ten minute misconduct. Uh, for trying to fight Logan Stanley. I mean, Logan Stanley's at six foot six, six foot whatever, He's right? A big He's boy. a massive guy. Yep. And Simmons is, yeah, Simmons is only six, like only six two, I say, because I'm comparing him to Logan Stanley here. Like, he was ready to take him on. Like, he was literally dragging Logan Stanley to the box with him. There, like, two referees are pushing Simmons into the penalty box, and Simmons just holding on to, to Logan Stanley for dear life. Just like, yeah, dude, like, what are you, like, what are you doing? Just fight me already. <laughs> So I found that hysterical. And then, again, there was 12 minutes left in the game, and the refs gave him a 10-minute misconduct. So if there's a stoppage after two minutes left, Simmons can come back onto the bench 
and then could come out for another shift, which he ended up doing, and he went right after Logan Stanley. And again, it wasn't much of a fight. It was more of a wrestling match. Stanley didn't want to do anything. Stanley after that, doing the whole, like, yeah, and then he gets up, like, he didn't even win the fight, and then he gets up and holds his helmet up, and, like, the crowd loving it, the bench is loving it, and I don't know. I mean, Winnipeg, for me, they're, uh, uh, they made like they made their own story that. out of a big vi- victory. Go go you go you. Okay, but um, yeah, just an ugly game. Ugly things happen, and that need of the face of Pionk that was scary. Same as like when Tavares got mm-hmm. it in the first round, the first game versus the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah. Corey Perry. That was an accident. This one, um wasn't really an accident even though if it was because like yes there wasn't he didn't want to hit him in the head but he was going at him like hey like this you're, you're not getting away with what you've done okay like you you're injured you injured sandy oh, yeah, and he's exactly. out but again, like, yeah, so that's the thing though right like you i think again this all goes back to the officiating also it also goes back to last season the Leafs and Jets played in a lot of very chippy games last year, and Pyong had another incident where Marner was scoring an empty net goal, and he just cheap shot him after the, the puck went in. Like it yeah. was for no reason. Like he, it was unnecessary. Well, so, trust me, I know, I know like, exactly of, that. I know, thinking, I know all about that. Yeah, too. right. Shifley in the playoffs. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, there's just Winnipeg is just this this very dirty team. And I, I wish, like, I wish they weren't because I like a lot of players on the Jets, and I want to like Winnipeg, but this is almost not allowing me to because just the way they play, it, it just it, it, they keep doing this. Like they have these low key dirty players, and they don't really pay. Besides that Shifley one, they don't really pay the price much. I'd right. say like they they get away with a lot, and yeah, I mean, you know, Sandine now because of that is out two to three weeks, which I think like. I'm just amazed. Like I thought for sure when I saw it was a knee injury, I'm like, that's like going to be like a month or two at least. But two to three weeks is nice. He comes back at the end of the month, which is not a good thing. Hopefully he's not rushed either. Um, right. You know, once to get back to 100%. He was having a great season. So, that's right. He's having yeah, a standout season. It's just unfortunate. I mean, yeah. And then you look at like, again, this all goes back to the officiating. If the officials just control things early on, like back when even earlier in the game when Matthews and or when Dubois was rush was wrestling Matthews and like just manhandling with him, basically yeah. just tossing him around. Yeah, like the refs could have done something there. So the game got out of hand very early, and the refs just yeah they didn't do anything. And also I did hear this from uh, Steve Angle's video about this game on Sunday. Okay. That the referees from that game Sunday night were the exact same from 2019 game two against Boston That's in right. the playoffs with the Leafs. And if people remember, that game two got out of hand to the point where DeBrusque had a cheap shot on Marlowe, didn't get called. And then Kadri then again had to take things into his own hands. He's like, okay, the refs aren't doing anything. This is the way it's gonna be played. I gotta I gotta stick up for my teammate. Then hit DeBrus into the board, and we all know what happened there. He gets suspended for the rest of the series. So, I don't know. I think you got to look at the officials for this game and, you know, have a talk with them and maybe just go over, like, why they're doing this and maybe give them less games in the future. And, I don't know, have more consistency. That's all I want to see, really. Well, they need to look at themselves in the mirror and say, like, are we doing the job at 100%? Are we doing our best? Are we repeating the same mistakes? Because you shouldn't you shouldn't be at your position at a very important position, officiating one of the mm-hmm. highest uh, leagues in the world. It's not the high. It's not one of the biggest leagues, but it's it's a big league, high paid players. The highest hockey in terms of hockey. And hockey, is, yeah. yes, it, it's it's national. It's our national league, and international players play here, and they're expecting the best of the best officiating and also the fans are they've been they've been asking for this for a long time um it sucks it feels like it's repeating we're just repeating this whole thing over and over again whether it be the regular season or the the right of the playoffs there's always something about the refs that they're not doing the right thing and it's a really hard rule to take over or to, to 
you know, have that a lot of power responsibility with that, you know, like they're their own superheroes, right? They gotta, they gotta mm-hmm. show up to the younger generation show that there is a fair game. And after you see this game, what you just said about them, the Maple Leafs in Boston, the nightmare that came out of that, um, also the dirtiness from the Winnipeg. When is it, when is it going to stop? What, what, what's going to, what's going to be needed for it to stop? Or to change, to have some way oh. to have the refs <laughs> like the these refs are going are and officiating these t these games with no no problem at all. They've they've had these issues before. They they have the past. They have the track record. They they just push it over and say, oh, yeah. it was just that one. It was just one game. We don't even know what they're saying because we don't we don't talk to them neither. They're just completely. Just hiding under exactly. a rock. Yeah. What are we yeah, going to do? I mean, I think, well, to answer your first question, what needs to stop or what needs to happen in order for this to stop is uh, harsher suspensions. And I'm being serious. Like, you look at, again, Spezza got six games for kneeing the guy in the head, right? But yeah. Again, that wasn't the intent. Brendan Lemieux got five, uh, it was four or five games, I think five games. Five. For biting Kachuk. He intended to bite Kachuk. <laughs> you see the difference I'm saying here? One was intent, one was an accident. But the hit wasn't an accident, but the contact of the hit, like the knee to the head was an accident. So yeah. it's just the intent, like, I don't know. And again, too, from what I heard about the the hearing, the in-person hearing that Spezza had with the league, was that he was very, like, he was cooperating with them. He said, like, yes, he was coming off the bench to go after Pion. And obviously he said after that, like that, I was just going to hit him like in the, the body. And as he was falling, my knee just hit him. So again, he wasn't trying to go after the, the head. He wasn't trying to need, be a dirty player. Like Spets has played over 12,000 games, never had a suspension in his career. And they're, they're all of a sudden just putting him as this dirty player. Like, no, he was just sticking up for his teammates. And, you know, he's been around long enough. He knows that you got to do that with the refs aren't doing anything. Yeah. To them, who cares about a six-game suspension? I'll just play NHL at home or spend time with the kids and the wife. Um, <laughs> but it's not safe. It's just not safe when the refs are not doing their part. They're letting it go uh, out mm-hmm. of whack. Of course, there's injuries that came out of that game. You mentioned Sandine and Marner also being out now uh, three to four weeks. So that's a huge blow to your fancy fantasy holds. Yeah. <laughs> that's they although they won, they won their last the recent game without Marner. So that was pretty big, pretty good game for the, the Leafs. Mm-hmm. All the best to the Leafs. And you know, hopefully that I mean both sides were in the wrong, but there's there was just no need to start it off. But like whoever started off the altercation, who cares? You know, just be professionals talking about the the injuries though there was also a knee yeah. in, injury with mark shifley i, I posted it up on the the uh, podcast oh yes oh yeah there uh, it is yeah i thought it was the rangers but uh, no it's the canes and mark shifley so this was of course the canes versus the winnipeg jets on wednesday night being cold fined five thousand dollars a uh, big hit on the uh, on Winnipeg Jets guy. Oh wow! Ooh. Oh, I gotta show it. I don't know if you saw it on my screen. Yeah, yeah I, I just caught that. He was not. He wasn't looking. Oh, I'm trying to. Yeah. There you oh, go. there we go. <laughs> oh. But then, nice. it's, yeah, yeah, it's nice. It it's it's perfect. Um, turn off the audio. So he's not even looking up. He's looking at the puck and then gets just taken out. What do you think of it? I mean, yeah, again, that's something that doesn't belong in the game. Ah. Like, Neen, it, Neen is always one of those things that, like, it, it scares me so much to see a player go knee on knee or get an injury in the knee because, yeah, sure, they're wearing shin protectors and it does cover the knee, but, man, the, when you're going that fast and the guy's coming at you with all that, force like that that isn't gonna do anything your knee is bending whatever way it, it needs to 
I'm sure I'm sure yeah, Cole didn't want to go really for a hit. I didn't I know I don't think he was trying to go knee on knee, but then when Mark Shifley takes it back, like and you know, he does his little fake there. He I think Cole wanted to do the whole body. Mm-hmm. You you didn't see you don't see him charge or anything. So I I'm happy I guess it's just the fine is fine. Although the fine again is stupid, five thousand dollars. Yeah. No, yeah, that... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Honestly, like they need to raise the maximum fine from five thousand to something more than that. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, no, you are right though. He didn't. It wasn't intentional. He was trying to go for the bodies. Shifley just kind of made that little move over to the side, which I mean, whatever. Yeah. Like Shifley, Shifley, in a way, kind of did that to himself. You can see, I guess, because. But again, he didn't mean to. I'm not trying to come off as like, oh, Shifley deserves it because he doesn't. No. No. He's a really good player. I like Mark Shifley. But yeah, that's just again, he he made that move. Maybe he's probably even thinking if I could do it again, I wouldn't have made that move on the guy cuz it wouldn't have resulted in me getting hurt. Yeah. Or yeah, well, he could is he out for long? He he could still get hurt, you know, uh... like who knows? Who knows if he if he didn't pull it back. If his head was up, like his head wasn't up either when he did his move. So if he he didn't do the move. His head was mm-hmm. up. Um, yeah, you might be right. Oh, dogs are barking. Um, yeah. trying it's to all see. just more awareness, I guess, on the player then. You see anywhere about injuries for him? Um, no, I'm trying to find something, but... Uh, injury update. I mean, I can look on the Jets' website, see what they're saying. Is expected to play on Tuesday. Day. Like next Tuesday or I'm trying to look. This was November 9th, so definitely yeah, yeah, not 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 this. No. It's last month. Interesting. For November 9th, that's <laughs> yeah, it's it's last yeah. It's yeah. Although that was a leg um... that was a leg injury again, too. So I guess the it hasn't come out yet. Mm. Needs another day. Well they are they are playing the Kraken tonight, and then they play um, Vancouver tomorrow night. Okay. Sure, they're... So I guess, yeah, just be on the lookout for those. Um... Sure, they don't want to miss out on Mark Shifley. Mm-hmm. So... No, he is an important player for them. I mean, they want him. You got any, anything else we want to yeah, talk anyways, about? you were saying. No, I think uh, that, that basically covers everything there. That uh, you know, I think we went over everything there. Uh, I guess it was actually one last one last thought. Um, again, I mean, a lot of people have been saying this, and I again just agree with them. I want to say it again that maybe it's time for someone new to be in charge of player safety at the NHL. That's all I'm going to say. No more George Peros. I mean, is he the is he the first one? First, he's the first one to go in, right? What do you mean? Is he the first player safety representative, or has there been other player safety? No, 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 no. Like Shanahan had this job like ten years ago. Okay, okay, yeah. Like there's always been the head of player safety because someone has to hand out suspensions and be in charge of that. But yeah, the fact that they made him. The head of player safety, like I mean, if you look at back at his player career, he 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 wasn't really good at keeping players safe. <laughs> you know what I mean? He no. was he yeah. was a big dude. He would hit guys. He would fight them. Like I, I don't know. I just I don't agree with that. He's not your poster and boy for for that. discipline. People... Yeah, exactly. That that's exactly how it is. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. Again, I feel like everyone everyone else has been talking about this enough, and basically my opinions mirror their opinions as well so i guess i guess if you want to hear that you can go listen somewhere else or what someone else has already said because again it's been said like over a million times there needs to be change how long has he been in his position now seven years eight years i'm sorry i don't mean to break your brain uh well when did he play for the habs because that's 2015 it's okay um you're hurting my brain now 
Yeah, so short... 2016, <laughs> he, they announced that um, he was he joined the yeah, league he... league's department of player safety in 2016. Yeah, yeah, right after he retired, basically, that was his first job out of retirement. 2014, he retired, December 5th. So, yeah. basically, 2015. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm. Yeah, exactly. Again. That's the decision they made, and I don't know. I mean, yeah, I thought for sure, too, after, like, the whole Tom Wilson with um, Artemi Panarin incident last year, late in the season, like, the way that was handled, I th- I remember people were calling yes. for his head then, yeah. and I don't know. I mean, it's just it's consistency. He can be there as long as there's consistency. But well, Steven, he won a cup. Consistency, he won a Stanley so... Cup. He's he's, he's... He's a legend. Oh, yeah, because he, he drove that team to the cup. He, oh, yeah. He led them to the cup that Easily. year. I forgot, yeah. Oh, yeah. I but forgot. Best, <laughs> best on the Anaheim Ducks right there. He has 1,092 yeah, no, penalty minutes in his whole entire NHL career. 474 yeah, games played. <laughs> I, it's, it's totally yeah, weird. It, it's, it's weird how the NHL does this to themselves. They take Guys to to represent their brand. George Peros is an example to represent. Oh, mm-hmm. player safety. You should trust me to take care of your safety. Uh, who was that kid that I, I showed you that TikTok guy? Uh, that I I took offense to. I forgot his name, and I'm happy I forgot his name. Oh. I'm so happy I forgot his name. But he yeah, was. I, I can't remember either. Dude. During I don't the care, but, yeah. exactly during the Montreal, I'm sure they actually stopped talking. But this this uh, TikToker, he never really talked about the NHL or anything. Never gave it any time and attention, and was named the uh, I think media something like media um, something about that. But he was not he's not meant for it. He was not meant for it. Um, a lot of controversy around that guy. No, not at all. I remember. What is that guy? Yeah, I remember the one that you that you showed me. That was uh, that was very questionable, and I was like, they're, they're actually letting this guy. It was really Josh like Richards. Was, Josh uh, Richards. Yeah, see, you remember? <laughs> you found it. <laughs> I found it. Josh Richards was the cho- the chosen man from from Canada to be the influencer of the NHL guy to to bring the new generation into the nhl and first thing he uploads was i'm a lightning fan and i hate the canadians and he, i'm not mad i'm already like i don't care leave me alone have suck <laughs> way, to, way, to, way, to, way to go way to go here you're in the nhl that's, that's who you want representing your brand yeah yeah great job nhl another another fantastic decision uh, he was chosen because he apparently shares the league's vision to engage young hockey fans related to our players and fans. And that's the only thing they have in common. <laughs> that's it. Hockey should be so classic oh, and so, so chill. It should just be about big brute men who f- hit each other and should be looked at like the NFL. And well, that's part of it. It's part of it, yeah. And it needs to yeah, be respected. Obviously, though, there's, there's now the. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was gonna say how now there's obviously you've got these like young, skilled, fast players who can all just like basically turn on a dime and do like it's Trevor Zegers flipping the puck up up behind the net for Sonny Milano to bat in. Like that's what, I think that's what the NHL want, and that's what the things they should be promoting. That's right. Like Sveshnikov doing the Michigan twice. Like in one season, you know, like those are the types of things I think the NHL should be should be promoting and want people to see because it's like, oh wow, like that's amazing. Right? Skills. That's, that's as close as the NHL can get to like a slam dunk, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's exactly. also I don't know like, the NHL or in the NBA. You... There's versatility in the NBA with dunking. Go on, no, go on. There's, there's versatility with dunking. You uh, you can do different moves. But, in Michigan, you just you bring the puck yeah, up and you it's saying, hard. Like, Michigan is hard to do, 
it's it's harder to do it. It's no, it's more I impressive to see that. in a game. It's harder to do a All Stars about a Michigan. Yeah, I know. I understand that, but I'm just saying that like a slam dunk in basketball is something everyone loves. Everyone loves to see them. They always make the highlight reel, right? Yes, yeah. So when these plays happen, like yeah, of course they make the highlight reels and stuff like that. But like that's the type of things that fans want to see. They want to see the big highlight reel plays happening every night, and that's what they should be promoting. That's all I'm saying. You're right. That they should be promoting those more. Absolutely. The league needs to go away from yeah. the hitting league and be, you know, I, I think that's it. Just the hitting league. Got to get out of the, the old fashioned um, brute force and more f- sophisticated. You got to sophisticate yourselves a little bit. That's it. Yeah. There's, there is still a place for hitting in the league. Like hockey should still be a physical sport. It's as, dangerous, you know, man. Like it's so dangerous. And... So dangerous. It is. And someone's it livelihood. Is of course it is. But that's why that's why at a young age, like nowadays, like kids are being taught, like when they're being taught about body checking, they're also being taught how to defend themselves when they see a guy approaching to hit them. Right. Because that's the thing. It's one thing to be able to give a clean hit. We also have to learn how to receive a hit because you don't want to injure yourself. Of course. Yeah. So I do know that minor hockey programs do have that. There are even like hitting schools basically for like kids in the summer to like oh, just wow. learn how to receive and give hits cleanly and like not get again because that's the thing. It's all about doing it cleanly and preventing injuries because you hate to see a guy's career ruined because of an injury that just takes him out forever. Could have been prevent- prevented, but missed the warning signs and then boom, the kid's career is done. I think uh, that's it, though. Yeah. Right. Got everything covered. Yeah. No, that's that's it for that topic. That was a oh, that was a rant. <laughs> was a little rant. For the most part, I ranted quite a bit there. I will admit. It's okay. You can yeah. go through subjects. 